Good afternoon and welcome to this weekend's edition of Mox News. I'm Sloane Deberry. And I'm Alexandria Adams. The Communication Department has a new course coming in the spring for students who want to learn more about online advertising. Along with a new course, the department is getting a new professor, Robbie Robinson, to teach Introduction to Online Advertising. I, mean, I think it's interesting. I don't think it's been taught in the communication department for 20 years, and when it was taught, it was advertising, and that meant offline advertising, print, TV, those kind of mediums. This class is, is specifically focused on online because that's the way the world is, is going now. Um, and I think that uh, in this market in Chattanooga, I, I, as I mentioned, I lived in LA, it's a huge, in, it's a big industry. There's not, there's opportunity here, but there's no real uh, training ground for that opportunity here. So I think students can come away with this with a better understanding of like how the bus behind the scenes works in the online world. When you click a link or you click an ad or you click one, a, a, a text ad or a banner ad or you click a Facebook ad or you respond to something like what's actually happening on the back end and how are people marketing to you um, and, and what your responses do and when you go to a website how is that measured? The class will offer a chance for students to learn how to market to certain audiences and make advertising more appealing. I think the idea for right now is that I don't want to use any textbooks because it's we're going to be talking about online. So I think everything we need is online. There's plenty of, of, of places to go to learn about these things online. My goal would, would be to take the students from an understanding of just what advertising is to understanding the business use for Facebook, Twitter, for all the social media tools that you use every day, as well as Google AdWords, which is a huge industry of the way businesses advertise um, and get traffic to websites. Um, and just kind of understanding the whole process of what online advertising actually is um, and how what a big role it's starting to play kind of in business. The course is considered special topics and requires department head approval to register. Evangelist preacher Angela Cummings returned to UTC's campus Thursday. She has announced she will be here for the next three weeks, so keep those hats and gloves close because she has already drawn attention. Tia Coleman has more on this story. Angela Cummings is back. She didn't draw as many students this time, but she did draw just as much attention as UTC police arrested a student today for trying to break the barrier around her. I'm Tia Coleman with Mox News. A young man tried to break our barricade to get in there at her. Uh, he was repeatedly warned to uh, stay outside the barricade and not approach uh, Ms. Cummings. Uh, and after the third, after the third warning, he, he attempted to go back into the circle to get to get at her. And basically, what he said was he wanted to ask her a question. Uh, after he was directed three times not to do so, then we uh, we tried to extract him from the circle. And uh, at that point, uh, he he. He, he, he refused to obey all directives and uh, we placed him under arrest. UTC police has identified why the student was arrested but could not name the student. We weren't going to ask him any questions. He had already violated the statute. So at that point we decided to place him under arrest for the safety of not only my officers but for the, all the patrons here as well, as well as the Miss Cummings. We have the video of the arrest from Josh Morales, a senior here at UTC. The video only displays the actual arrest. There isn't footage of how many times police asked the man to back away from the circle before they arrested him. This guy came by on a bike and he stopped and said something to her that I didn't catch and she retorted back with something that pissed him off and anyways, the police told him to move on, just to keep going, move along. And he uh, apparently got back on his bike and tried to keep going but through the circle that they had blocked off. And once the second he took off into that circle, they literally grabbed him and just tackled him right off of his bike. Um, and that's when it all started. And everyone was, uh, uh, our crowd started gathering and everyone was wondering what was going on. He was struggling a little bit because he was like, what did I do wrong? I don't understand. Um, they were able to pin him to the ground and he wasn't fighting too, back too hard that I saw. Just was really confused and angry that he was being, you know, pinned down to the ground. And the cops didn't say anything the entire time I was there. Uh, he was asking, why are you arresting me? What is this for? Uh, and they remained silent. Um, people around me were shouting, why aren't you reading him his Miranda rights? Took out a can of mace and actually tried to mace him in the face. 
which it did hit his face. I'm not sure how much of it got in his eyes, but they maced him at least three to four minutes after they had already tackled him. It will be very mixed, it will be very heated because the people who witnessed it were very upset that, with the cops. They did not understand why the cops were being so violent with this, with this guy. They kept shouting, why aren't you saying anything to him? What did he do wrong? And I feel like students are going to be very up in arms over the way the police reacted to this guy and treated this guy, but then also just the fact that this woman who has been able has been allowed to like stand out there and preach has caused this to happen and has just been basically a nuisance on campus disrupting classes. Campus police said there was no pepper spray used in the arrest, but the video provided to us showed otherwise. Though the officer only used the spray to what looked like a scare tactic. In the video we did see like a spray. Mm -hmm. um, you said it wasn't pepper spray, but could you identify what it was? Oh, it was pepper spray. It was just never used. Just was never used. Yeah. On him or just? It was never used. I mean, we held, I think the officer held it, held it toward his face uh, to get him to comply with the verbal directives, uh, but he never used it. Check out the echo for the full version of the story. Organization leaders on UTC's campus attended a Lunch and Lead series Monday in the University Center. The Dean of Students Office sponsored this lunch series to educate student organizations on how to become leaders. Um, transitioning is a, a big part that is overlooked and um, not held to a higher standard that it needs to be. And a lot of stuff that we learned today we can definitely take back to our, um, our chapter and incorporate that into a successful transition so it's not as hectic and a lot smoother into the next upcoming year. This series meets four times throughout the semester and covers different topics about transitioning new leaders, collaboration between leaders, and other leadership qualities. About keeping notes, I do not keep notes. And for my predecessor, or no, yeah, my predecessor, I want to make sure that they know how it works. Being the first one to do it, it's going to be a lot of trial and error, so hopefully keep a binder and inform them what's going on. Any leaders of student organizations on UTC's campus are encouraged to attend. Tuesday evening, the bookstore hosted Crap Food Alternatives, a lecture designed to help students eat better on a busy schedule. Nashville-based author and journalist Jennifer Justice lectured to students on healthy alternatives to make in the resident halls. I think the crock pot is your friend, and it's really good to get acquainted with it. And um, one dish that I really like to make is to put a whole chicken into a crock pot, and then you can use that uh, that chicken into several different meals and it you can change them up and so it's not necessarily just the same leftovers over and over but it's you know the the chicken from the crock pot but then you can make chicken tacos and you can make barbecue chicken sandwiches yeah. and you can take the juice from the pot and turn it into um, soup. Justice's main points which she calls her five philosophies touched on topics such as use a crock pot once a week and also put an egg on it which makes everything taste better. You can find my book here and on Amazon. It's called Food Lover's Guide to Nashville. And if you have any questions, you can always email me. I'm at Jennifer Justice, J-U-S-T-U-S-8 at gmail.com. UTC CEO Club hosted their second annual elevator pitch competition trying to find the best job idea pitched to judges in 90 seconds talk. This is our uh, elevator pitch competition. This is the second one we've had. Basically, it just gives students an opportunity. You get two minutes to pitch your business idea. Uh, today, I think we had 11 presenters. Uh, we have 14 slated, but some don't show. Uh, so we had 11 people pitch their idea. Then at the end of their pitch, uh, the judges asked them, you know, one, two questions just about their business, um, kind of help them think through the process of you know their target market or how to grow their business, things like that. So a lot of these, some of these are in the very raw stages. Some of them have you know viable products and are ready to go. Uh, but there's a whole wide array of students here today. There were 11 groups that pitched their ideas at the event to be judged by professors within the College of Business. So as for our round two participants, we have in no particular order, Vitter. Solutions, uh, Nuga Out, uh, Park Smart, Warren Castings, 
tip tap. And finally, go fucker. So, so yeah, that's that'll do it for our second annual Fakers competition. The top seven winners will go on to compete in round two in January at the Hamilton County Business Development Center. There's two rounds. There's the first round and the second round. Um, we pick around probably like six people to go to the second round. Uh, and then if you win the second round, you get $2,000 startup capital for your business. Uh, we pay for you a trip to go to Tampa, Florida to compete in the regional elevator pitch competition. Uh, and then you also get some consulting services from the, co the company lab and Lamp Post Group uh, here in town. If you would like to get involved with the CEO Club, visit utcceo.com. That does it for this weekend's Mox News. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to check out our videos uploaded throughout the week to YouTube. We air on Housing Channel 2.3 and Cable Channel 3, so tune in. Until next time, have a great weekend from all of us here at Mox News.